Every day I go to work um, and I do something, it somehow directly or indirectly adds to the security of, the, of my country. The work at Crane is providing for the warfighters. Uh, the warfighters over there are our friends, they're our co-workers. So the work here at Crane goes much deeper than just a nine to five job. When you know somebody's at home making these products, you're thankful for it. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good feeling, you know that you're not having to use explosives that you found on the side of the road like the enemy is or, or that may or may not come. I know several kids that are over there and I think of them as like my own children. I see people come through here, reservists, uh, people that are in the guards. They're our family. We have to take care of them. The, the American people back here, the, the working force that supports, that makes our ammunition, our weapon systems, I mean, the, the uniforms that we're wearing, without them, we, we're nothing. Well, it's very important to me because I have a son in the Navy, and my son is protected by them planes flying in the air. I have a nephew in Iraq. They're, they're very proud of what goes on at Crane. You know, I don't get up in the morning and say, man, I really don't want to go in today because I like what I do, and I like Knowing what I do, it's, it's helping protect people. We're saving lives every day. And I love it. Everything we do here at Crane Army is designed to help support the warfighter. Providing illumination and other pyrotechnic devices to Army and Marine Corps assets. We also uh, produce aircraft decoy flares in support of Navy and Marine Corps aircraft. We do a variety of maintenance and other types of uh, renovation of ammunition. We do the mill van operation here at Crane. Uh, material comes into us, we prep it. We have a load crew that will load it into the mill van. We have blockers that uh, come and get everything done and an inspector that seals off on it. And then we load it onto either rail car or trucks to send to our troops. For OIF, OEF, we have shipped over 40,000 short tons and 3,000 containers. Completed here at 1646, head to 1159. 1159, Roger. I currently am working in the ATAC Center. That came out through a continuous improvement event due to the vast amount of buildings we have here. We have 1,700 storage facilities. We have 30 to 40 crews working for shipping and receiving. It had to have a centralized database and the ATAC Center keeps track of the crews and makes sure the mission gets accomplished. We coordinate all the jobs, any priorities that come up. We have the capabilities to move those jobs onto the proper personnel and make sure they get done more quickly and efficiently. If they need it, we have to support them. Being able to do the outloads and watch the munitions go into them, I mean, that's doing something. I represent Marine Corps Systems Command. I oversee the Marine Corps stockpile that's stored here at Crane. Crane Army is the go-to depot when it comes to short notice shipments overseas or pretty much anywhere in the country. Crane Army ammunition activity is extremely responsive to the needs in terms of shipping and receiving. We're able to efficiently uh, ship over 47,000 short tons of ammunition yearly. Um, we ship over 4,000 advances. Uh, we ship quite a bit to contractors. We support contractors, contractors support us. We repair containers for the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. We want to be the number one repair facility that repairs these ISO shipping containers because it makes us feel really great that we can be a part of something like that to support the warfighter the way we support it and they get their ammunition shipped to them. I think our mill van outload process, if you were ever here to see it, is the most amazing thing you'll ever see. When the chips are down and we have to perform a mission, Crane is the place to go. To me, illumination lets the enemy know, hey, I can reach you. This is a non-lethal way of letting you know, back off, stop doing what you're doing, because all you're doing is just lighting them up. The only way that we could ever secure a road in Southwest Baghdad was to have an American soldier looking at every mile of that road. If we use illumination on that road, 
whether or not an American soldier is looking at it, the enemy may have the perception that we are, and that prevented him from using his main weapon system, which is the IED. I believe Illumination played a pivotal role in, in, in keeping that route secure. Our main programs the last 10 years have been illuminating candles. We do uh, mortar candles in the 60, 81, and 120 millimeter family, as well as 105 and 155 artillery calibers. And we do a visible light and an IR version in all five of those families. Depending on the size of the round, we can run up to 1,200 candles in a 10 hour shift. And if we need to go two shifts, four, five, six days a week, whatever the needs is of the customers, we can do that. I want to make sure that I'm going to be safe and that my guys are going to be safe, so I always call for the rounds. In roads around Ludafia area, we actually use illumination to deter enemy from in place in IEDs. We are a major government supplier of aircraft decoy flares. When the government has a need for additional decoy flares, they come to Crane Army to produce these and keep the warfighters going and the planes safe. PMA 272 is our program office for uh, all expendable countermeasures within the Navy. We went to uh, Crane Army Ammunition Activity and solicited their help. And within a year's time, we were actually up and running a production line. This filled a critical void in our production of infrared countermeasures, and it has worked out great. We are currently manufacturing the MJU-55B. On a daily basis, we can produce 520. With the lean that we used, we went from 19 employees to 6 employees, and we can still keep our production up on a regular basis. With our safety steps in place, a core group working together really says a lot about Crane. They can step up to the plate and do the job. The add-on armor job that we had, we actually got these drawings and uh, were told that these had to be in crates and be shipped within 30 days. We figured everything out and coordinated with the machine shop, supervisors, maintenance, production personnel, and just the general motivation there to get this job done and get those kits over there as soon as we could. Watching production workers work 24-hour operations, working as hard as they could, slipping notes to the soldiers into the pallets, you know, wishing them good luck. That particular program, the add-on armor for the Humvee kits, um, it was probably the proudest moment that I've had since I've been here in four years. I actually got a letter back from a soldier. He was able to trade his non-armored Humvee in for an armored Humvee. That afternoon he went out to run a mission and he told the story of how roadside bombs went off and basically they were able to drive out of that danger. He said if it wasn't for that add-on armor, he wouldn't be able to write this letter right now, and he was going to be going home to see his family in a few months. Some of the other types of products that we have done actually have been the Mark 80 series bomb renovation that we have. A couple years ago, we had a big push to take our facility and basically make that process a lot more efficient. And those products left our building and was going straight to theater the Persian Gulf to be loaded on board ships so you know that's uh, very rewarding knowing that.